So hi everybody. I am Vaibhav Shukla and I welcome you all to another interview experience and today with us it is Ritu who has recently cleared and she has secured a placement in Cognizant and she has been through the complete journey of Cognizant with Prep Insta she was one of our good alumni and henceforth we as a team first of all Ritu congratulate you over your success over this great milestone that you have achieved because i know personally that you have cracked two internships one more placements so it's it's really good to have you here so first of all introduce yourself tell us a bit about your journey uh thank you sir for the opportunity so hi everyone my name is ritu i have just completed my semesters and i was all in this interview process throughout so yeah uh, i have given interviews uh, of a lot of companies uh, i go i i have given interviews of accenture and uh, nokia and all also so uh, i was uh, like uh, it was very hard for me like uh, it was a tough journey uh, preparing for interview going through all these things and uh, yeah i've given a lot of uh, companies interview but yeah as you know that uh, rejections are a part of it so we face that also but uh, overall i can say it was a learning experience for me a new experience a learning experience i i learned a lot uh, through all this process i gained so much of information that how 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 to handle the pressure of interviews and how can you know uh, cope up with all the, that how can you prepare yourself and how can you face everything and then you know just ace it so yeah so that's that's pretty good insight that you've given ritu so along with that how did you come to know about cognizant so uh, i used to follow prep insta of campus and prep insta 2025 instagram handle and from there i got updated okay so once you filled that form then how did you start gearing up yourself for the same um i had watched the syllabus and the test pat- uh, pattern of cognizant through which uh, i got i could strategize what to do uh, through whole my preparation plan okay so so far uh, whatever the interview that you went through and the whole experience that you had of cognizant how yeah. do you rate the interview difficulty level specifically the interview portion uh you can say it was 8.5 to 9 yeah oh matlab it was pretty much on the tough side as well ah, yeah yeah it was the tougher side okay so how many total rounds are there generally in this cognizant uh okay so uh, basically there are three rounds so the first is the aptitude round uh, game based questions behavioral questions second is the technical round based on the uh, whatever cluster is allotted to you and the third is a technical round again based on the cluster so this cluster is generally the same cluster na java python c yeah, yeah 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 okay okay So, Ritu, how did you prepare for the aptitude round? Uh, so, sir, uh, basically, there are you know, uh, YouTube is a vast source, so you can get anything from YouTube. So, I took help from YouTube also. I had searched uh, the online uh, the papers also, the past years questions, whatever were asked in the cognizant and all. So, uh, also not specifically for cognizant, but for other uh, companies also, whatever aptitude questions were asked. So, I used to prepare from there only. and yeah i had my books also i have aptitude books and all so i'm very a keen uh, learner so i used to you know learn and all i used to solve problems daily on daily basis so usually you felt that aptitude was a gatekeeper to all the yeah, special yeah. tests yeah. so how much time you were giving to this particular aptitude um uh, as you know that we are in college and our semesters are running so it's not very you know uh, like you cannot give so much time on that you have to cope up with all your uh, semester things also so i make sure that each day at least i give one hour to this thing so that i can you know prepare uh, my aptitude thing okay so yeah so for dedication. all the students so for all the students i feel this is a great insight that at least daily one hour you should devote to your aptitude because it is the first gatekeeper it always filters people out find 80% of the people get rejected in the aptitude round itself in most of the companies even when i was in college there were a lot of students who were great in solving coding questions they were great in dsa but they brutally failed in aptitude and most of the times they were rejected from the companies just because of this so to everybody who is listening this do prepare aptitude well Now Ritu let's straight away jump on to the interview fine so how did the interview begin so uh, it began with my introduction uh, then he dug up uh, the academic performance and then the interview is switched to the uh, technical discussion yeah so initially you were giving some brief about yourself then straight away to the technical discussion yeah 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 okay 
So I guess Ritu, this cluster was the Java, C, plus plus Python kind of a cluster, right? Yeah, it was a Python cluster. Okay. So I would like you to elaborate on this technical discussion that happened based on this cluster that you had. Uh, so, sir, I was in Python cluster and so it started uh, with how Python can be used in machine learning and then he shifted to map functions and lambda functions in Python, which you know it is. And then he moved to the OOPS concept, the object oriented programming. Okay. So basically, whoever is listening this, now it is a great insight for all of you. We had just completed a Python series and it was free of cost on YouTube. Fine. To all those people who want to learn these map functions, lambda functions, they have been taught in class six or class seven of that one week class of Python that was specifically for placement. So you guys can go ahead and watch it. Apart from that, I too suppose, and I always advise this object oriented programming has been a very essential part in any of the service based companies. So do prepare it well, guys. So what were the questions on oops, Ritu, if you can elaborate a bit on that. Uh, yeah, sure. uh, so encapsulation and inheritance, he first asked me in detail, then he asked me the different with difference between multiple inheritance and multi-level inheritance. And then he moved to the coding questions. So basically he expected you uh, about to go around to definitions or he just wanted that go ahead and explain me the concept loosely. What kind no, of, uh, it was uh, not related to definitions. It was somewhat, but more he was focused on the code concepts. Okay. So he wanted to understand basically what exactly is multiple uh, what level of understanding. I have, I, I completely get it. I completely get it. So what kind of coding problems were asked to you and how many of them were there totally? Okay. So there were, I guess, two coding problems. One was the uh, one was to write uh, the second highest number, and uh, one was I guess the Fibonacci series okay. in Python. So the second highest number in a particular data structure, or broadly second highest number, you have to find. Uh, like in a list, in a list of uh, some uh, numbers, okay. I you uh, he said that you have to find the second highest number. Okay. Okay. So basically, he expected you to return some second highest number if he, you're having five or six yeah. values. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So to all of the students who are actually listening this, I must say that Fibonacci series or the factorial programs, they are actually important programs along with that second highest number is also now a previous year question for all of you. So you can focus on that. So can you share some resources Ritu from where you actually prepared this coding DSA and everything? How was this journey of yours? So talking, so talking about my DSA journey, so it was a very, you know, rough patch of struggling with Python, Java, algorithm, so many coding languages. And also I was uh, really stuck in this vicious loop of solving arrays and arrays again. However, in my third year, when I got a uh, prep Insta prime subscription uh, from my college, so there I started, you know, exploring few courses over there. I had already worked in machine learning and so I had a natural inclination in Python. But when I got this prime subscription, so I started, you know, learning in all DSA from uh, uh, DSA with Python, there is a course in prime. So I started learning from there. So, you know, uh, like there was no looking back. And then my journey became pretty smooth in understanding algorithms and whatever the core concepts were there due to this prep Insta prime, which my college provided. So uh, while I was uh, basically focused through Cognizant because as my interviews was going, so I was, you know, specifically preparing for Cognizant. So uh, there I brushed up my coding skills using the Cognizant interview course on Prime, which uh, had very dedicated sections of basic and the intermediate coding also, which, you know, really helped me. So this interview experience, it gave me a re really decent idea. Okay. So I can uh, draw two inferences from this answer of yours. One is that you practiced a lot from various sources, but prep Insta prime subscription was the one source where you went on to go hands on about the coding problems, right? Because yeah. if I correctly remember in the basic coding problems itself, the Fibonacci series is there on prep Insta prime. Yeah, yeah. Along with that, you said that initially you were struggling with languages like Python, Java, and then I can see you gradually shifted to Python. So. I wanted to know that how did you come to this decision of selecting one language for yourself? Uh, actually, it is said that Python is easy. So, you know, I was very poor at coding. I literally do not did not have so much, you know, knowledge of coding and all. And I used to always run away from coding. But uh, some of this, one of my senior, uh, one of my colleague or one of my 
yeah one of my mentor in fact he you know just uh, told me that hey why don't you start with learning python python is an easy language so you know once you learn python there is no uh, like a hard and fast rule that you can't learn all the coding so you languages met this mentor in your internship right because yeah yeah and it, yeah that's what i remember from the conversation that i had you i had with you yesterday yeah yeah i i met him in my internship and uh, there he told me that you know you can learn uh, it from uh, start it from python because python is an easy language and then you can shift basically your interest to other languages also because one coding language is enough for you to understand basically the basic concepts actually okay so that's how i shifted to python okay okay so can you go about explaining me that what exactly shifted the whole interview because yesterday what i remember was you were telling me something about that sir later on he asked me about my project and my certifications correct yeah so what happened when you went on about answering your certifications and what exactly was his review on those projects so i was asked to explain my both of the projects so one project was basically built on the lung cancer detection Okay. which uh, was based on a deep learning and uh, uh, one certification also i had from this uh, data science uh, i had uh, i had of data science which i had taken from uh, prep instac prime so i had uh, this uh, certificate also and uh, in in my project also um, this um, lung cancer thing and also uh, one more project i had did uh, it was basically uh, based on like um, especially when we had covid and all so uh, there were you know uh, many things uh, like uh, there was no contact no people people could not you know touch things and all so there was one system uh, which which we had designed which you know uh, in basically for hospitals okay which used to take uh, the medicines and all and it was basically a trolley kind of thing which uh, used to take the medicines and go to uh, b- uh, bed by bed and there was no contact or no use of you know like uh, human interference in that so both of the projects he asked me to explain and he also asked me that what certification you had so i told him that uh, i had one data science certificate which i yeah all uh, taken from this prebensta prime only so basically you uh, made one lung cancer detection project and other one yeah. was the software part of that uh, whatever, yeah, 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 or whatever yeah. it was built correct yeah so i feel that both of these projects have a great degree of contribution to the society somewhere or the other they have the element of novelty in them and to everybody who's listening this i would always say that two sectors are always very rewarding when it comes to giving the projects number one is healthcare number two is defense if you can build any project in these spaces using your computer science skills believe me you're going to uh, just clear the interview with flying colors i'm not kidding because this puts a lot of weight ritu after this were there any hr questions or was the interview concluded here for you no no there were no hr questions the interview was concluded over here okay okay so if there is one mistake that you want to point out that you had done a lot in coding or your dsa or your aptitude and that you would advise other people to refrain from what would be that mistake uh sir one mistake uh, from which i basically learned is that i think most people do that that you know whenever you learn some coding questions or whenever you start learning a language you should also solve problems on it like if you are learning one concept try to you know solve problems like what we do and what uh, i had done i used to only just see the videos and you know whatever coding questions were, he used to solve them on on the video i used to say i never tried to solve it on my own this was a very big mistake i did you used, to, it, you used to jot down the solutions just no 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 i don't I, i just saw the video i was like okay the next problem which will be i will solve it on my own but unless and until you solve that very own problem how are you going to understand the concept that what is the pattern you are following or what concept is there and how can you able to solve the another question based on that I so that it. mistake i did and i later realized that no if you are seeing it in a video any solution just first pause it and try to solve it on your own just see just give some time to it use your brain because what we do we just see the solution and we're like okay this can be done but so when you when you try to attempt it it is tough basically you're saying that straight away not to jump on solutions first pause yeah. and then try for that yeah just think give your mind some time to think let it bring it to a solution and if you're facing a lot of problem like initially you will have problems you will have struggles on it and you're not going to ace it in one go 
so you give some time to yourself solve two three problems based on the same pattern and then you will later realize that every problem is related to some pattern and once you understand that pattern it will be very easy for you you know to start coding and all and then you will enjoy doing it which i followed and i literally enjoy and i'm doing it okay so i guess this is pretty much a great interview experience that would benefit a lot of students ritu and on that note i would tell everybody that if you find this information useful first of all of course subscribe us but along with that go ahead spread this information as far as you can keep doing good for others without any expectation just like ritu is doing for all of you by sharing this interview experience keep doing good without any expectation good will always come back to you on that note have a wonderful day ahead and ritu once again congratulations to you i hope that you crack more companies and we take more interview experiences of yours have a wonderful day ahead guys bye 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 so thank you thank you